We're now going to make a polished concrete to be used for the floor for the rendering. And I'm going to come down here. You can see I've typed in conk into the materials browser. And I'm coming down here and I'm choosing concrete eroded. Now when I have a look at that one in the, the view here, you can see I'm going to change that to a sphere because I'm going to do some glossiness and some reflection on that in a minute and it'll show up better. But it's actually not a bad map to start off with. If you have a look at this image file, this is the JPEG that Revit is using. And when you have a look at where that comes from, you'll see that this is the directory that gets downloaded automatically when you download your Revit software. So what this means is that every particular Revit download has the same images, which means that it's very easy to be able to create these and know that if you go to another computer with Revit on it, that you will be able to use your same materials if you take that with you. A seamless texture, which is what this is here, and you see this JPEG here is actually going to get copied sitting right next to each other to the left and above and below. So what it needs to have happen is that when this edge comes and meets this edge, that it is seamless. You can't tell where one edge finishes and the other edge starts. And that's what we've got here. However, it's not a particularly large image, so it may not look terrific when we've created a big mass of a floor. But if we've got things like rugs and countertops sitting over the top of it, it'll probably look good enough. The scale of it is set by over here, 550 and 400. So the width in the real world, this particular image will be 550 millimetres wide by 400 high. And getting the scale right is really important. Now this has no gloss on it at the moment. So I'm going to take you through the differences between all of this. Glossiness. Now that's the smoothness of the surface. And the smoothness of the surface affects both the reflection and the transparency. Now notice if I pull the glossiness up to 100, nothing is happening because at the moment my reflection is not turned on and the two need to work together. I'm going to turn my reflection on now and you can see that there's 50% direct and 50% oblique. So what that means is the direct is how much light gets reflected when the surface directly faces the camera and the oblique is how much light is reflected when the surface is at an angle. I'm going to show you just a couple of differences between the two because it's important to understand what each one controls. So if I pull back direct to just a little bit, you can see that when the light is at an angle, so down here, it's got a sheen, but on the whole, it doesn't have an enormous amount of reflection. If I pull this back up and pull the oblique back down, and you can see that the reflection is more intense. So it's, it's a lot more subtle when you've got the oblique on. Which, for what we're doing with this concrete, I'm just going to muck around with these until I get something that's about right. So if it looks right in Revit, I say it is right. Maybe a bit less. Maybe a little bit more reflection. I'm trying to get a bit of a satin finish going on here. that's going to do for the moment. I may need to come back and just adjust that. So we adjusted a few things here. This colour, you notice, is, is actually taken from this JPEG. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to reduce the intensity of the JPEG, I could do an image fade. So it's going to say less of the image and more of that colour. So it's just sort of like blotting it out, muting it. And maybe that's necessary if that pattern got a little bit intense when it's repeating across the floor. I'll cover transparency and the other options in future materials. So that's our polished concrete. I hit apply and OK to hop out.